how often, uh, Avinash, how often do you conduct these webinars for them to get insights? Yeah, no, we just, uh, so this is uh, the fourth one now, right? So we started a little more than six, seven weeks back. Idea was to do it every week, but right. we had a little bit of disruption, but we were only planning five webinars. Right. But, uh, yeah, as you said, we must reconnect. You must uh, reconnect. And uh, it's such a great opportunity, thanks to COVID, you know, we are able to virtually connect and we are able to do beyond what we could have done physically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think we are ready to get started. Uh, Shazi, are we good to go? Yes, sir. We are good to go. Perfect. All right. So good evening um, to everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Avinash Sohal. Um, I am a marketing medtech professional based here in Toronto, Canada. But in my spare time, I also spend a lot of time on mentoring uh, young talent who are ready for the corporate world. Um, those of you who've joined us before, there were um, a kind of wide variety of conversations we've had, uh, right from how to prepare, how to find your calling, and how to get ready for the corporate world. Uh, today, we'll go a little bit deeper, uh, specifically in the IT world, because we know most of our audience uh, is looking for opportunities in IT organizations, and we have an industry expert who will give us some insights on how to navigate that path. Um, so our guest speaker today, and welcome Tripti De Puria to the, to the session today, um, just as a uh, as an introduction, uh, Tripti uh, is a co-founder and managing partner of TD Newton Associates. Um, she has over two decades of experience in consulting healthcare IT, uh, IT and contract staffing with uh, many global corporations such as Capgemini and United Health Group. She has also worked for several startups to help them ramp up in a record time in highly competitive talent markets in Asia, North America, Western Europe. Her work included uh, formulating the talent strategy, defining and streamlining recru recruitment process, and training recruiters and hiring managers as well. She has been specially recognized for a very keen understanding of uh, businesses and for her ability to innovate in managing the talent supply chain. Uh, Tripti has very strong understanding of a wide range of technologies and domain areas um, and has done extensive work in IT, BPO, BFSI and healthcare industries. So that's pretty awesome because uh, as I said, our target or the, our audience today will have opportunities to ask questions around uh, IT sector. And uh, Tripti is very well versed in on-site offshore models of operations and emerging trends in IT industry. So with that introduction, um, uh, thank you very much, Tripti, for joining us today. Uh, how are you doing today? Great. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Avinash. Uh, thanks for inviting me on this panel today. Uh, this topic is very close to my heart. When I came to the industry, uh, recruiting happened to me by chance, not by choice. And it's been more than 25 years that I've been recruiting. Uh, I spent 15 years, as Avinash said, in corporate recruiting. I, in fact, uh, visited a lot of remote places across India, looked at experience, non-experience, campuses, uh, top campuses, and uh, mid-tier campuses. And uh, then I quit my job and started TD Newton. TD is my name, Tripti Devpuria. And uh, Newton, okay. is, uh, Newton is the name of the other co-founder in his village. We started TD Newton with a name to kind of get as many people as possible jobs. And yeah. uh, I'm very glad that you invited me on this platform because I must have interviewed close to around, uh, you know, in the last 25 years, more than 5 lakh people across geography. Wow. Right. So yeah. uh, I hope that, uh, you know, I'm able to share some of my experiences and, uh, uh, you know, tips to some of the people who are passing out now. No, so thank oh, that, that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> I think um, uh, this is a <clears throat> unique opportunity for us to connect with someone who does <clears throat> recruitment, especially of 
pressures in the industry on a, such a recurring basis. <clears throat> um, so you were an uh, employee with organizations and then you became an entrepreneur and you have a, a fairly large organization. Um, and I think I'll start uh, with something that I believe our audience uh, struggles with and that's really around um, how to get started on finding jobs. Um, so if you are in, uh, in university or in your campus, there are often campus recruiting uh, opportunities. Um, many people get jobs there. Um, some people um, end up looking for jobs outside in the market. So if we start with that, uh, when and where should one really apply for jobs in addition to campus uh, recruitment process? Right. So interestingly, uh, campus, I think only 20 to 25 percent of people get the job they really want. Right. And okay. uh, others and these 20, 25 percent of people are really the top people of the college. Right. And that doesn't mean there are no jobs available in the market. It's just that the organizations are not able to reach out to the relevant audience. But there are a lot of platforms. I would really uh, recommend that there are uh, there there is a lot of lot of demand for even people at freshers level. So only only up waiting for campus to happen and only uh, applying for uh, jobs at campus is definitely not going to get them uh, a good job. Uh, and my recommendation to all these audience, which is uh, passing out from uh, engineering colleges, is to look at opportunities on a social media platforms, especially LinkedIn. Uh, uh, there are jobs on LinkedIn available even for freshers. Keep applying them. Uh, look at jobs with your alumni. Track where your uh, college alumni are working. And that's your best, best uh, place where they can recommend uh, those companies, right? Individual companies. Look at every company uh, website. Make target list of companies and look at uh, their website to see when they hire. Uh, campus normally gets hired between August, September time frame, whereas uh, there is a lot of demand from uh, organizations to onboard people in the month of April uh, to June. And that's where they are not waiting for uh, uh, going to campus, but that's where they hire, start hiring between April to June is the month they hire off campus. Uh, there are a lot of off-campus drives that happen. So other than Nokri, uh, LinkedIn, uh, organizations uh, that uh, put up uh, ads very frequently on their website, also on social media, There's also there are also platforms like Indeed, uh, First Nokri. There are IM jobs, like you'll be surprised, IM jobs are not only pe for people who pass out from IMs, right? But keep your eyes and ears open for every single uh, sites for techies, also places like GitHub. There are a lot of ads where uh, companies keep looking for uh, talent. And uh, I would recommend that be socially very, very active, be virtually very active uh, for applying for jobs. Uh, participate in a lot of events that happen, uh, things like uh, uh, Grasshopper or uh, there is a Hackathon there are a lot of competitions that happen and uh, even participate in these competitions uh, which are uh, sponsored by uh, very high level technology driven companies uh, so keep your eyes and ears open for such events and do as much of participation as possible wow so that, that there is quite a other forums where you can go and reach out um, so that that's uh, that's very encouraging to know that you know if, if, in case you don't find a job in campus you know that there is there's a huge um, need out there and companies organizations looking for um, for positions and people um, who are relatively freshers uh, so that's about fact, avinash i would think that they should be prepared that there are no jobs in campus like this is how they should start thinking that there are no jobs in campus and i must Look at all my other alternatives to look for jobs. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you, you have to, as, as they say, you know, prepare for the worst. And yeah. over preparation is always better than under preparation. So, yeah, I think that's a great point. 
so so that's about where to find a job now with and i know you look for people and you recruit people all across the chain right to the c suite but when you are looking for freshers in especially in it organizations what do you specifically look for in those people like what are your top few uh, skills or or um, or or the experiences that you look for so okay i mean uh, if i have to actually recruit for let's say either tv newton or some of my clients and if i have to go look for freshers i won't look at any skill sets at all i'm not going to look for people in either java python or what they studied in their engineering uh, colleges but i would really really look at uh, how hungry are they for this job how badly this job is important how like what does a job mean to them is the job uh, really something that uh, they aspire to be or it is a tick in their you know it's like a peer pressure parents said uh i've i've done my regular school education and now next is the job so let's just apply for the job so i look for really people who are hungry for whom the job matters the most that is what i would look at that's the first thing i'd look at second thing i would look at something beyond academics um a uh, lot of jobs really don't need top academically talented people a lot of jobs require life skills right their ability to navigate their ability to multitask their ability to work under stress their ability to uh communicate uh uh and a lot of organizations don't have clear cut roles defined yeah so that's the second thing that i will evaluate as to what is the level of uh, uh, competency beyond academics that person can demonstrate uh, okay. in an interview and i think third uh, and the most important thing i would say is the flexibility you know people who come with a very set mindset this is what i want to do they are probably people not but because the corporate world is very different than uh uh regular uh academic world like i think none of us none of us actually do anything relevant what we studied right in any profession so corporate world is very different we look at people who are very flexible uh, uh and who have problem solving skills who are able to so- come up with solutions and uh Uh, solve a problem as opposed to think in a very narrow uh, outlook. Yeah. So I would say these three things are very important. If I have to even hire somebody for, uh, let's say, TD Newton on a, any of my clients, uh, yeah. I would go after these three. Of course, there are a lot of others, but I think these are the top three that I would look at. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So you spoke about flexibility and adaptability. Um, but how do you really find it out um, in an interview setting that the person is really adaptable and flexible what are some of those insights that, that <laughs> that's like an art that's like an art like as a uh, as a person who's going through an interview will never ever realize that he's been judged on yeah. how flexible he could be but there are different ways of finding out you know uh, uh, and to the contrary like there could be questions which could be asked uh, uh, you could be given a choice that there's a job which is requires xyz to be done there's a job which is which requires you to perform something different and there's a third job which is this what would you choose yeah for example you know yeah. uh, yeah. the uh, and uh, in the same thing could be asked differently in another question saying that uh, you're do- performing a particular job you've been hired to let's say you've been hired as a python developer mm-hmm. uh in the organization and um, you start working on python for about a month month and a half and two and suddenly we get a project and we need somebody to work on a very uh older version of java and yeah. there's a project but there's a need of the business that you actually change your uh a uh, stream and move from one project to another project and it's a requirement from a client in that situation how would you react yeah right yeah 
some of those questions i think a uh, uh, lot of times uh, uh, in people who are interviewing actually be very smart and give answers that the panelists want to hear but eventually panels are very smart they will they will try and cross verify and come back and see how flexible is the person in terms of technology skill set locations roles even flexibility in terms of work timings yeah yeah location maybe um where will you work yeah okay yeah. um so those those are great points and i really want to encourage our audience to ask questions at this stage uh, we just um, heard from tripti that primarily she looks for the hunger for the job or the career and then things that you've done beyond academics and then we spoke about flexibility and adaptability and if if there are any questions pertaining to this or to interviewing process in general uh, please feel free to ask and uh, at the right time i will be asking to the your questions uh, so continuing our conversation further um, you mentioned some qualities that you look for but uh, do you have any favorite interview questions that you always ask and that you recommend that our audience should always be prepared for them ah oh, favorite questions so on an average uh, you could be asked in an interview interview is minimum half an hour interview and it can go up to one hour so yeah. if you've had an interview shorter than half an hour then probably uh, you know you've not been positive in your uh, first round itself but you know you know half an hour kind of a situation you could be asked close to around uh ten to twelve questions, so you should be at any given point in time be prepared to answer ten to twelve questions and um there are a lot of questions, but some of the common questions that I feel a lot of candidates don't prepare very very well and uh I'm glad that you asked me this question uh and most common question asked is tell me about yourself mm mm-hmm. and uh, i find this question is like your make or break a question okay you know uh, you can really really make the interviewer draw the attention on you by answering this question and uh, like we tend to prepare for very difficult questions but we forget to prepare for this tell me about yourself mm-hmm. and um, this question the way i i would recommend like each and every one whether you're an engineering graduate or you're an mba graduate or you're this graduate right is uh, all of us have something very very unique about us very unique about us all of us have a story about us right so you have to create a story of who you are as a person and tell me something about yourself and this story need not be only and only which college you went to what subjects did you study which school do you come from uh which year are you graduating none of this the story is about you who you are as a person where do you come from and a 60 minute you know you get normally the story need not be very long it needs to be uh not more than 45 seconds to 60 second story about yourself which can include things like where did you grow up where did you spend maximum time in your life you know did you uh, you, you may have something unique you know you may have traveled across country you may have uh, you, your parents would have probably had transferable jobs uh, uh, that could be part of your story you could have been a uh, topper in your school days you know uh or you could have been a very balanced person uh both in uh, academics as well as extracurricular activities mm-hmm. you could have spent uh time uh exploring mountains while you were studying or you would and you would probably like traveling beyond academics so a combination of where where your roots are what your academic performance has been uh, what have you done beyond academics right yeah. and uh, what do you bring to table that has to be your story and this story does not have to be a very standard format don't make it a standard format make it plus make it dramatic like you know you watch anything be it ipl be it uh, uh, 
uh, any movies you know in movies that have emotions right you get attract drama that you get attracted towards that to ensure that your story has a drama part in it be it a sad drama or a very happy drama it gets told very well very well with interviewers like you really become a different person than the normal crowd yeah oh that's awesome i think so some great tips in there i think and the key also is to practice right you often think i can talk about myself um or you you totally lost when that question is asked but there are um i personally noticed in my early years when i was preparing you know this question every time i tell myself about myself you know it's um, it's uh, introspecting it's also a journey but my pitch gets finer and finer as i speak to myself again and again so i think practice is also the key to to fine tune your story right yeah the and the story has everything the content the tone the yeah. right the pauses right yeah. the way you narrate the story is also equally important perfect so this is your first question tell me about yourself any other favorite interview questions that you have okay like since the audience is really it right they, yeah. and you're going to be uh, appearing interviews where you are going to be definitely definitely question on any of the analytical skills there could be a puzzle that could be given to you there could be uh, uh, a riddle that could be given to you there could be a situation given to you right yeah so uh, you must must be prepared to answer anything beyond a resume like any engineering related like maybe maybe uh, questions when uh, you probably sat for your entrance test you know those analytical questions is also something that i'll ask all the engineering students to like that is another second phase of uh, which are very common questions you will definitely definitely be asked okay okay so and, and the other other most important thing is about hobbies you know a uh, lot of interviewers uh, uh, everybody like everybody at a freshers level uh panels like interviewers are looking for what are you doing beyond academics as we've said time and again and people uh focus on uh, what are, what have been your hobbies or where have you spent a lot of your time beyond academics and that is another very important question uh yeah. that everybody should be able to answer uh and uh, there there are two sets of people there are one set of people who have no hobbies Yeah. and uh, uh they don't know what to say but they eventually end up saying that i love watching movies i love watching uh, singing uh, listening to music or um uh, i play chess for example anything anything like that so you have to be very careful like if you do not have hobbies then there's a different way of saying that you know i spend a lot of my time in academy and uh, with family and uh, certain situations which i did not get time to uh, focus on other activities as opposed to just saying that yes i have a hobby hmm. right yeah. and because you will be asked this question let's say let's say for an example you said that i love playing chess and the uh, next question that can come to you is uh, tell me if you are playing wise what will be your first move hmm. okay fair enough and, and if you're not able to answer that right then you are then the panel knows that chess doesn't happen to be your hobby right right so your answers have to be really honest and and you have to be ready for follow up questions you know yeah you have, have to be super honest you have to be super super honest uh, and another thing that works very well with panels is not just success stories you don't yeah. necessarily have to tell about your success stories your great marks your great achievements but you can definitely create a story of your failures and how you bounce back mm, absolutely mm, that's awesome yeah so yeah it's it's the failures that make us right sometimes we are hesitant in not talking about failures right we are most of the time not <laughs> we are most of the time hesitant talking about your uh, failures or even facing failures or even remembering them but yeah. i i have lot of senior leaders who look who in fact there is uh, there's a client who came to me and said i i want somebody who's failed in life okay 
That's interesting. You know, I want he wanted somebody uh, who is failed, who understands the value of success, mm -hmm. and who yeah. wants the success so badly. He said, if I get somebody who wants success very badly, he's the one who is going to make difference yeah. to this role. Okay, perfect. So uh, we have quite a few questions from audience right now to ask. So I'm just trying to filter where to start. But while we are on the interview questions, here is a question from someone that, uh, how to answer the following interview question? What attracted you to this company? Okay, and this is a great question. What attracted, to, what attracted uh, you to this company? So again, as I said, uh, you know, you have to be honest. There is possibility that you just need a job and there is nothing about this company that attracts you. If that is the case, then you can, you know, you can answer it in a way saying that I'm extremely sorry, but I've not done my homework enough at this point in time. I really, really, really need a job. And uh, the fact that you are hiring, that itself attracts me to this job. That's a good answer. I never thought about that. It's a good answer. <laughs> so that can be an honest answer, but you can yeah. research. Like I would really recommend that before you appear for interviews, right? It's like yeah. you prepare for your interviews. You prepare for your exams. You prepare for everything. So whichever company that you are appearing interview, do yeah. enough, enough homework on this company. And you will find so much available on Glassdoor, on LinkedIn, on social media, uh, reviews, even on Google, yeah. you'll find enough about the company. So just research, research, yeah. research, and identify what are the top three uh, uh, great points about the company that employees are talking about, our clients are talking about, right? And also this down what there will be a lot of, lot of employees also write very bad reviews, right? Yeah. And most bad reviews are stress-related. No work-life balance and a lot of stress and a lot of work and so on and so forth. So read, know the company enough before even appearing for interviews and then frame your question, frame your answer according to that. Mm -hmm. And as yeah. I said, there is, remember one thing, there is no right answer. There's no right or wrong answer on any of the interview questions. It's about your own belief about the question that is what you need to put forward to the interviewer. You don't get judged on, uh, you know, you don't get marks on, okay, this is the right answer and that's the wrong answer. And this is the next marking. There's no right or wrong answer. The answer is always the one that you truly mean it. Fair enough. Um, another question that is pretty dreaded one for many people is what are your weaknesses? So how do, what are some strategies to answer that question? So if you've already, like I, I sometimes uh, come across people in the third year, fourth year, don't understand their weaknesses. Their weaknesses could be at max, uh, uh, you know, not being able to, uh, being emotional. You know, they, they consider themselves very emotional people uh, and are not able to make uh, right judgment or uh, things like that. But uh, uh, there are, uh, your weaknesses could be, you know, you can make weaknesses two ways. Either you could say that your weak areas are a particular subject. Yeah. Uh, you could be really weak in, uh, let's say, uh, data-related subject. You don't like data-related subject. So uh, I would say the answer about weakness could be not, don't make it emotional or uh, situations of life that you're not able to handle and things like that, but make it very academical that there will be academical subjects that you will have your weak areas. And uh, uh, when you're asked this question, then talk about what are what is the weakness in that subject and how do you, what do you do in order to address your weakness? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so what are your weaknesses and um, what have you really done or what do yeah. you plan to get rid of and improve on those areas. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's say, you know, my weakness is, let's say, data structures, for example, or my weakness is uh, networking. I don't like networking, but I have to study networking because it's part of my curriculum or it's part of my subject. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and you can really talk about you can you know just put one more line saying that I I like uh, object oriented programming more than I like uh, networking. Uh, yeah. But uh, and so I end up spending a lot of time uh, doing object oriented programming uh, practice. But because networking is my weakness, I put it. I make sure that I yeah. give enough time to my networking subject as well. Yeah. So yeah. for engineering students, weaknesses don't have to be emotional or don't have to be personal. Don't have to be uh, non. Academical. They can be only academical weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, another question uh, from audience is, why should we hire you? If that's an interview question, how do you answer that? Okay. Why should we hire? <laughs> why should we hire you? Is another very very common uh, question. And yeah. as I said, there is no right or wrong answer. the uh, The way you answer the question will make the difference. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, two ways of answering this question. One is letting the other person know what you bring to the table. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, what you bring to table is not just engineering degree. Remember that you yeah. don't bring to the table just engineering degree. Right. You bring to the table the attitude, the passion, uh, the hungriness, as I said, that yeah. why this job is so, so important to you. And yeah. if if that's the kind of person that you're looking for, then here I am. Yeah. Fair enough. Right. So, and this can be very unique. Like, as I said in my early uh, part of this webinar, that look, there's something very unique about every individual. Every individual. There's something unique. And that is what you need to identify. What is so unique about me? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and I mean, one often overlooked area also is where, where do you find what companies are looking for, right? Um, they give sometimes pretty good details on the job description. So uh, what I have personally done is I read through job description 10 times just to understand what are they really looking for and where is a match between the job uh, description and my skill sets and my aspirations, right? So often I think that could be um, one area that you know just to know what they are looking for and um, really demonstrate see this is what you're looking for a b c and i do have experience in a b c and absolutely right? absolutely absolutely yeah uh, another question a few people have asked actually is uh, i have a year gap in my education in this case uh, ashish has a gap between 11th and 12th will it affect my career journey uh, well, uh, it may affect your career journey. However, okay, if you are able to demonstrate real reasons why you have, yeah, yeah. right, and uh, then no, right. But you just took a gap here, and uh, in that gap here, you are not able to demonstrate what you have done in the yeah. gap here. Yeah. Then it, it, you know, I'm not saying that you may not have a job, but I'm saying you may stand a chance of, yeah. uh, you know, and remember one thing, any job that you're applying for, and this is to, today's scenario, right? That there is, I, I have only 10 vacancies to fill at an entry level in my organization. And I have, I am scanning 100 applications. Yeah. I'm scanning 100 applications, which means you you may be either the top 10 or you may be the bottom 90. So what you need to do, if you have a gap here, then you need to emphasize or create a story. And you need to definitely have something to showcase to the panel, which you've done uh, beyond the gap year, like in your regular uh, academics, you've done something very, very good, or you've taken extra time and spent time on uh, building some codes on your own, or you are working on technologies, or you are aspiring to work on technologies, or you've got yourself self-trained or uh, signed up courses on Udemy or NIT or 
any such institute and you have learned something that the industry really wants today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And which others may not, you know, so you need to differentiate yourself. If not, then, you know, you may have had situation, personal situation in the family or otherwise, and you are, we all make mistakes. Like I know students who, who realize it very late in career or in life that they want to be serious about their profession, right? And, uh, but there is time for everyone. The, mm -hmm. It's like the saying, right? Avinash, sorry if I'm using Hindi, but mm -hmm. so as long as you've realized your uh, mistakes and you bounce back, that is yeah. the story that you need to demonstrate. And there are a lot of, lot of upcoming technologies where there is a lot of scarcity. And if you really, and people who are professionally working currently do not have any any time to cross the cross skill themselves. But people who are currently pursuing engineering or are going through academics, they have a lot of time that they can spend upskilling themselves in some of these areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> another question I've seen a few times in the list here is um, uh, the question is. Uh, did IT companies hire freshers more in comparison to experienced employees? But I, I guess the question is, how is the general outlook right now as far as need for hiring of freshers is concerned? Um, any thoughts? Uh, I think I'll categorize that into uh, vanilla hiring in IT, vanilla skill set, right? Uh, okay. Which is your backend Java programming, your .NET uh, programming, your ERP hiring or your ETLs, uh, analytics, data, all the generic skill set in technology don't get hired, like they get hired from the industry. Like they don't necessarily, companies are not looking at hiring somebody and training them on Java. Mm -hmm. Right? So those vanilla skills where companies are spending a lot of, uh, they are actually, they are able to get people at a certain cost, right, in the market because there are enough and more people. But there are areas where um, uh, they are looking at uh, hiring freshers uh, on a lot of emerging technologies for their requirements in the emerging technology side because experienced people first have to unlearn some of the things and then learn. And they are way too expensive at yeah. their experience level. So. I would say that, uh, and I'll give you, I'll give you areas that you should spend if you're a third year student, or even if you're a fourth year student in today's scenario, this may change in three months, right? Because technology changes so fast, right? Yeah. But if you're a third year student, then there are certain languages that you get started, you will definitely have an upper edge over some other people in the industry, in IT for sure. Okay. So there are technical skills like uh, programming languages like Golang. Okay. There is Python. Yeah. There is AWS, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, cloud-related technologies. There is something called DevOps area, yeah. right? So all these areas... Uh, even in UI side, there is something called React and Redux. Okay. <clears throat> so if, if you self-learn some of these technologies, if you do certifications on your own, or if you write and demonstrate a small program and put it on GitHub, or any coder community, Or even gaming, like the big thing, right? The big thing is the gaming industry. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so I some of these, they're, they're, companies are hiring freshers. Companies are setting up boot camps. They call boot camps. That uh, I will train, let's say I'll hire a fresher and I'll put him under a boot camp where he will learn all of these formally. But who will I hire? I'll hire somebody who will understand, has an idea, or has done some internship or mm -hmm. some small project or has gone through formal training, any any of these skill sets, right? I would want to go ahead and hire them. 
<clears throat> okay. So yeah, looks like there, there is a list of uh, some emerging technologies that if they show up in your experience or resume, that will make a significant difference in differentiating yourselves from the rest of the... Yeah, company. but not just resumes. Remember, a lot of pressures make this mistake, right? That mm -hmm. they have skill set written in their resumes, Yeah. but they can't talk about it in interview. Mm -hmm. So yeah. another, another thing that you may end up doing uh, uh, is you may have a lot of things that you've done written in your resume, yeah. but if you're not able to talk about some of them, then you are out in your first round. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So that takes me to one of my questions, actually, uh, that I was wondering. Uh, so this is a mistake you can make, right? That you, you're showing things on resume that you cannot back up with your comments or with your expertise. But any other mistakes that are maybe memorable to you that candidates make and are often rejected because of those mistakes? Absolutely. So you don't make it through first round if some of this you don't take care of, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and most important, most important is like now interviews happen virtually, but uh, by the time you will pass out, you'll have you'll be given options. Right? You'll either have virtual interviews or you will have face-to-face uh, -face interviews. If you are given a choice between uh, virtual versus face-to-face, -face, then please opt for face-to-face. -face. Do not opt for virtual. Even if you have to travel from one state to another state, even then choose to have a face-to-face -face interview. Yeah. Right? But most importantly, the question that Avinash is asking, what are the mistakes that we make and you, will, you may get rejected? is when you're interviewing your body posture, how you present, what you wear, uh, uh, how you appear to, mm -hmm. to the interviewer, that takes care of 50%. Like the moment somebody walks into the room, it's like a first impression, yeah. right? The way you walk into the room, the way you sit on a chair, you know, whether you're sitting cross leg or you're sit not sitting cross leg, whether you move your legs while you're interviewing, because a lot of, lot of students are nervous. So they keep fidgeting with their hands, their legs, their body languages. So they are not really, their body posture is not very confident person. Yeah. So okay. this is one of the things that you may be rejected in your first round of interview if you're not prepared yourself very well of how you look, how you appear, uh, how you present yourself, a smile. You know, the moment you enter an interview room, just a smile can make a difference. Yeah. And a very genuine handshake can make a difference. Okay. So uh, this is one thing that I would say, uh, which is very important, your body posture. Second thing I would say is that a lot of people talk a lot in the interview. Oh, okay. they, 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 they think that only talking more is going to make the interview work feel that I'm really, really wanted. And uh, that may not be true. Like a lot of uh, uh, panels or a lot of interviewers don't appreciate you talking too much. Uh, as long as you're talking something very relevant and uh, to the questions. We've, we've come across a lot of people whom you ask a question A and they're answering everything but the answer A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do not give, you may not know the answer. If you don't know the answer, be honest enough that, you know, I'm so sorry uh, uh, that I'm not able to answer this question and be very honest. Like you're honest. Uh, you can't manage an interviewer. You can't kind of play with an interviewer. So just be very honest and uh, talk about uh, uh, things which are relevant to the content. That is very important. And uh, third, third thing, uh, Avinash, that I feel uh, some people don't make it to the next round is because they wrote something in the resume they are not able to substantiate. Hmm. Okay. You know, taking back to my original uh, point about uh, hobbies, things like hobbies, they've written something, but they're not, they don't have examples 
like yeah. you need to have examples of everything that you are asked a situation yeah if you are if you are just making a statement without content or without a scenario yeah then you are not definitely not making it to the next level yeah okay fair enough i think those those are some great tips um yeah i do see a lot of questions here and there is no way we can we can answer uh, all of them today but uh, let me take another one and sure. this is after the interviewing process so some people are wondering that they interviewed and had multiple rounds everything went very well but now they are not hearing back from the company what should they do okay let me tell you the situation on the other side right you are on this side where you've appeared the interview and let me tell you the situation on the other side mm -hmm. uh, most of the time recruiters or hr people are, are way way too busy way too busy with their uh, day to day jobs right yeah. and um, uh, not just that i think you may get many messages many calls many emails right before the interview but the moment you finish the interview there will be a pin drop silence mm -hmm. there may be pin drop silence because the organizations either have not decided or made up their mind of uh, their list of selected candidates it on an average it takes them one week to 10 days to decide it's not that you've been interviewed today and tomorrow you get a result if you get a result tomorrow you're very lucky yeah but sometimes uh, on an average it takes about a week 10 days even after it takes week 10 days what happens is i had let's say 10 vacancies and i interviewed 100 people i came up with three list of candidates list one mm -hmm. but this is my first list of candidates that i want to go back to and uh, initiate the offer there is that doesn't mean all the other 90 are rejected so organizations don't go back and tell you that you are rejected then they will have a list too the list two is my second priority list so if somebody from the top 10 decides not to take the offer because of whatever reason right then they will go back to their list two and going back to the list two may take 3 weeks mm -hmm. so my recommendation is that keep appearing interviews and think that you've been selected everywhere keep your positive attitude learn from every interview that you had practice a lot of interviews and continue to interview till the time you don't have an op letter in hand yeah. continue to apply don't don't appear for one interview and say oh wow it went very well yeah. very 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 well and you now have decided to relax yeah so don't do that don't relax till the time you have not had an offer in hand mm -hmm. yeah fair enough uh, i think so uh, your comment on uh, smiling uh, caught some attention someone is asking uh, so that's great but how do i keep myself confident because i do get nervous during the interviews so uh, then practice interviews you do practice interviews before let's say you have a dream job at company xyz let that not be your first first interview let that be your fifth sixth or seventh interview interview your interview enough and what trust me like you know I, like i used to think that uh, uh, iit exams are very tough very very tough you can i like at least i can't crack it for sure but i know now that if i prepare enough and preparing enough for me will be different then avinash will be different and you will be different i may have to prepare two months continuously spending 9 hours a day to prepare for my idea entrance but for avinash it may be you know one week he's god gives to mankind so it may just take him one week so know how much preparation you need for that interview and if you really prepare till the time you are not confident about the interview do not appear for the interview and also one more thing being about being nervous you are nervous because you have a fear of failing 
Yeah. Remember one thing that the interview that you are going for is not end of life. Yeah. Is not end of life. The moment you start thinking it's not end of life. Yeah. And I would really recommend that uh, uh, people who are not uh, very confident. Uh, uh, from in terms of communication, in terms of appearance, in terms of, you know, uh, every day, ans write down standard questions, write down your story, write down your answer, stand in front of the mirror, lock yeah. the room, stand in, in front of the mirror, or just record on a phone, record yourself, whatever you are talking, and then see where you need to make changes yeah. to yeah. your answer. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think uh, what I have seen many people do successfully also is just uh, connecting with uh, people. Maybe there is someone a couple of years senior to you or someone you know who's in a similar industry and ask them to do a mock interview for you. You tell them, um, you know, I'm interviewing with this company and can you do a mock interview? I think most people will be happy to do that 15, 20 minute interview. And yeah, you, any mistakes you can make, you want to make in the mock interview and not the real interview. I think that can also help in building confidence in answering questions, right? Uh, and uh, Avinash, eye to eye contact is very important. In okay. any interview, you will gain your confidence the moment you're looking into the eyes of the interviewer. Yeah, yeah. If you start looking here and there, yeah, you will never be part of that interview. Fair enough. Yeah. So confidence, eye contact. Um, yeah, a lot of people are, I don't know, shyness or other factors. We sometimes, especially if, if there's a guy being interviewed by a lady and there's always some hesitation, but that's very negative because that uh, apparently that means you're hiding something if you're not eye to eye. Uh, not only that, I would like, if I would be nervous, actually, I would sit in the interview room and I will let the panel know. I am, excuse me, I just wanted to let you know that I'm super nervous. Okay. Yeah. For the interview. So just pardon me if I'm not able to answer something just yeah. because I'm super nervous. So just just open yourself so much. Let the person know that you're nervous and then your nervousness will go. The other person will make an effort to ensure yeah. that he makes you comfortable. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, one of the last questions and I'll take from this one as well from audience. Uh, there are quite a few people asking about the conversation about salary expectations in an interview. How do you go about it? And especially as you are a fresher, uh, are you really even in a position to ask for a certain kind of salary expectations? The, I, I don't think this question is asked in any okay. interviews. This question on salaries, uh, uh, in a lot of like profits that at least uh, I am recruiting, uh, they don't even ask uh, experienced people in the interview at the interview stage. There may be a separate HR discussion that will get scheduled to find out about the compensation expectation. But this question is not asked in any interview. What is your salary expectation? See, remember, at for pressures level, most of the company have a standard salary slab. Mm -hmm. And since you're going through interview, you will know from your friends, otherwise, or even the job that uh, somebody came across would say that this job is at 6 lakhs per annum, or that 4 lakhs per annum, or that 12 lakhs per annum. And you, gen there are generally industry standards and norms for pressure salary. Mm -hmm. And you, the, there is possibility you may end up getting more than a usual pressure if you, let's say, demonstrate an AWS certification on your resume. If you demonstrate an internship, which is really real internship. Yeah. Right, then you may be uh, different in terms of compensation, but compensation questions are not asked. And if they are asked, just say, I'm quite open, whatever is the company standard. Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, very good. I think we are, um, uh, believe it or not, time went uh, pretty fast. Uh, we are almost at top of an hour. Uh, but at this stage, I, I just want to certainly comment that uh, uh, there are questions that we haven't answered today, but uh, in the last session of this webinar series, next uh, 
which will be next week, uh, we'll go really deep into some more uh, interview questions. Uh, so that's great. And with that, I certainly want to thank you, Tripti, for your time as well. Uh, this has been um, a learning experience for me as well. Uh, but at this uh, stage, um, I invite Gaurav to make some uh, concluding comments as well. Gaurav, over to you. Hey, uh, thanks a lot, Avinash. And thanks, Trupi, for such an insightful session, starting early on that, uh, uh, like sharing your vast experience of more than 5 lakh interviews. Amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then sharing how to start that interview. Okay. That an introduction. Avinash made a very, uh, you can say, uh, relevant point, which is very, uh, you can say, uh, useful for our uh, attendees who are young students, like that every time he uh, refines his about about me, right? And that happens with me also, right? When you, when I've been invited to many programs, people ask me to share about you, right? I have to write a mail, <laughs> uh, introduction about you, that what you have been up to, and it keeps on evolving. And once you do, you should not copy it uh, always from the previous one. That's what I have learned. Okay. So that goes with the students also that you have to keep updating yourself. And at the same time, iterations and practice, that is one of the key things. And mock interviews, definitely that's a play a big role. And that navigation, definitely it comes with, uh, you can say more and more uh, practice when you face with that scenario, right? Whatever, uh, like uh, you, uh, you very nicely mentioned that part, uh, that to getting into uh, any job, right? The first thing which is very important in, uh, relevant is uh, or you can say most crucial is that hunger right so so uh, apart from everything like preparation is one thing but at the same uh, time if you really want to get there okay so it's uh, it, and the interviewer can i think uh, they can realize it right they can see it from your eyes the way you talk and and since you are master at this craft right <laughs> like by judging the flexibility or uh, like any skills also getting down into skills so, but at the same time, uh, the uh, interview uh, who is going to be uh, the candidate, so he also becomes better by facing more and more thing. Okay. So, so that's where I think uh, lies, uh, you can say the balance. Okay. So if you are first time, you, uh, you might be na naive enough to utter something which is not uh, suitable for you. Okay. But with time, you also become pro at it. Okay. So, so at that time, then it's a level playing field. So. So with this, I think uh, to all the attendees, uh, uh, those who have... I think one more advice I have for all the attendees, since they are engineering graduates, that practice a lot of technical online tests. Yeah. Like Podlity test or Hacker Earth test. You know, they do like 60% of the job is done. If you, you can start early on, like start appearing technical tests online, uh, which are writing codes, you know, some of the questions that have uh, come across in uh, our analytical questions, our theoretical questions, our MCQs, and also programming questions, or some questions are also debugging, whether you have experience or no experience, but just the, so do practice uh, hacker earth, codality, test as many times as possible, as and when you get opportunity. True, true. To audience like here, so this is what we do, Tripti. Like our platform is very uh, focused on hands-on practice, and we have a gamification wow. self-learning module, okay, which is focused more on analysis recommendations. And we uh, recommend to the student learn by practice, okay, rather than just uh, going through it and have a being a uh, like audio-visual mode, right? So I think that is one point uh, which will, I think, definitely go home to our learners and they will listen more to our account managers like Sachi. Their job will be easier. So thanks for sharing it. And thanks a lot for uh, your time. Uh, and thanks to Avinash also to sparing time and sharing valuable insight. That's all from my side. Thanks. Yeah, we're looking forward to more of uh, such sessions. Yeah. Sure. Perfect. Thank you very much, guys. Everyone have a great day, great evening. Thank you. Uh, all the thank best to everyone. Yeah. Thank you very much, Avinash sir, uh, Tripti ma'am, as well as Gaurav sir. Uh, we have noted all the questions from the uh, webinar and we will merge it. And soon all the students whose questions left to be answered, we will answer in the next session. Thank you. Thank you very much to all the participants. Have a good day. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Yeah, bye. Thanks all.